Are you ready for some baking? Football treats, that is. Get your colors ready. Get your pom-poms detangled. We're gonna be baking some touchdown treats this month on Aprons Optional. First thing we need to think about is your team colors. No matter what your sports team is of choice, there's always a duo or trio of colors to think about. Then, when it comes to flavors, let's talk salt and sweet. When it comes to football season, I like to team up with those two. It's a for sure touchdown. And finally, because we are talking football, let's talk tailgating. Sometimes it's a little too cold to be outside, so let's bring the flavors inside. These s'more touchdowns are one of those recipes that goes super quickly. So we wanna make sure that we've got everything ready and laid out because it's one of those things where timing is pretty important. So we're gonna start by taking some packages of graham crackers and we're gonna open them up and put them all over a jelly roll pan. So here's the deal with jelly roll pans. A jelly roll pan is a 15 by 10 by one inch pan. If you're like me, Growing up, this was always the mint brownie pan because it was what we made mint brownies of. So the first time I was looking in a cookbook and I saw that I was supposed to have a jelly roll pan, I didn't even know if we owned those. We actually had seven of them. So with that being said, I'm just covering the bottom layer of my jelly roll pan with graham crackers. Now, the best thing to do with this is to snap them in half. You can, if you want to, snap them in quarters, but we'll eventually be breaking this apart even further. So for the time being, this will work just fine and dandy. And when you get to the end and you've got these kind of tiny spots, this is one I like to break them again on that next line and just fill in all the way up to the edges. So now I'm gonna take three quarters of a cup of butter. I'm gonna put that into my pan and three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. Now what I'm gonna do is just melt this all together. So I'm gonna break apart my brown sugar and mix that together with my butter. All right. So it doesn't take very long at all to get that melted and combined. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transfer this over and just gently pour it over the top of my graham crackers. Now the great thing about this recipe is it goes together super quickly, which means if you're in the middle of your game and you want s'more touchdowns, just like you want for your team, you can quickly pop out another batch of these and it doesn't take long at all. This is really a 10 minute or less recipe depending on how organized you you are when it all gets started. So before I even started building this, my oven's already preheated to 350 degrees. So I'm just gonna quickly take my spatula and spread this out to cover up to the edges as much as possible, my brown sugar and butter mixture. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transfer this over to my oven. Once it gets into my oven, I'm gonna bake it just for five minutes. It goes super quickly at 350 degrees. And then I'm gonna pull it out to make it look like we're ready for s'more touchdowns. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat, ugly, disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're gonna take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, and so are you. I now have my base level out of the oven and I'm gonna turn it into my s'mores now. So I have it on pot holders just to make sure that nothing happens to my counter. I'm gonna start by putting pieces of chocolate all over the top. You want them to be small pieces, not too large so that they just start to melt. And if we think about this, you want them to kind of be like what you would have on a s'more if you made one by a campfire. I wanna be careful not to double stack my chocolate. Um, I wanna give it space to kind of ooze around when it starts to melt, when it goes back into the stove. So I've got my chocolate. 
All right, now that I've got it totally covered in chocolate, I wanna come back in with the marshmallows. With the marshmallows, I wanna put three to four cups of marshmallows all over the top. So basically, I want it to be a nice thick coating. Also, this is gonna go back into the oven, so you don't have to worry about it starting to totally melt and be taken care of out here. Okay, so I have my marshmallows, I have my chocolate, but now we need a little bit of team spirit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add gold M&Ms to the top. And then my team's secondary color is purple. So what I have here is I have some purple decorating sugar. So now I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna sprinkle that on top of my marshmallows. So I'm gonna use my pot holders. Remember, this is still super warm. And I'm gonna put it back in the oven for just a minute or two so that everything all melts together. The best thing about this third down dip is it looks pretty fancy, but it's easy enough to get done before the game even starts. So we're gonna start by using ready-made French bread that comes in a tube. So we're gonna grab this and open it up. And these things always scare me. I get really uncomfortable opening them. It's not like it's gonna attack me, I just... Ooh. Okay, there we go. One done, only two more to go. <laughs> so we're gonna start by taking this one out of the tube. And now that we've got it out, kinda, sorta, maybe. There we go. And then we're simply going to totally unroll it. Now with this, you gotta take some time here so you don't tear the bottom. But if you do, there is a way to fix it. It's not the end of the world. You just have to go back and re-pinch it together. When you get to the edge, you're probably gonna have a little thick piece and that's totally fine. We're not gonna worry about that. We're actually gonna leave it just like that because we're gonna take our second roll of dough and open this up and we're actually going to make French bread that looks like a football. So we get to that icky part again. Oh, no, it didn't go. No, it... <laughs> okay, there, whoo, it went. Okay, so we're gonna totally open this one up too, but this time we're gonna do it a little bit differently. We're going to start making that football shape. So in order to do that, we're going to take this and we're just going to lay it on top of the other piece and we're going to make an arc with it. Just like that, pretty easy peasy. Ooh, there we go. And we're just going to line it up with the first one. And we're going to come together and make a football shape. Now with this, you just kind of keep shaping it and shaping it until you get that football design that you want. And keeping in mind too, if it's not exactly perfect, it's okay because it will change its shape a tiny bit in the oven. Because as this bread bakes, it expands. Now I'm gonna come in with my pizza cutter and I'm gonna trim the edges. And pull this to the side, get it away. Just lay it over there. I don't want it to double up on itself because I've got plans for it. Now I'm gonna come and take this extra off. And I'm gonna take this extra off. So with one of the extra pieces that I cut off, I wanna find one that's a little bit longer. And I'm gonna take my wheel and I'm gonna cut just slowly and make some side laces. Because now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay that over the edge and I'm gonna shape it to have it start looking kind of like a football. And I'm gonna take another piece and wrap that over here. Now, when I think of football, I think of the laces running down the middle. Now I've got this big long piece from before. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this and see what it kind of looks like there. 
And now I'm gonna take some smaller pieces and I'm gonna make cross laces. So it's really just going around and looking at what little extras you have left over. I'm gonna lay that over the top like this. And now actually, to keep it nice and safe and transfer it easier, I'm gonna lay it over here on the edge of my parchment paper like this. And I'm just going to keep building more laces over this. So now, it looks messy, it looks funky. We're not sure what this is even gonna look like at this point, but we're now gonna put this into a 350 degree oven. I'm gonna put it in for 20 minutes and check and see how it's doing. It could be in there as long as 30, depending on how it ends up cooking out in your oven. But while this is baking in the oven, we're going to make the dip to go in the middle of our third down dip. We taught him how to hit a baseball. How to hit a receiver. The strike zone. The net. You taught him how to hit the upper corner. You even taught him how to hit the open man. But how much time have you spent teaching him what not to hit? So now that I have all of my shape put together with my football and my laces, I'm going to take an egg and I'm just going to gently beat it in a bowl and I'm going to make an egg wash for all of my bread bowl. Now when you do this, you just need to whisk it together gently and then taking a pastry brush, go over the top of it and I want to cover the whole thing. By doing this, it'll also help the bread bowl cook up nice and brown, and it will make it look more like a football. If you skip this step, your football and your bread, it's just gonna be a lot paler when it comes out of the oven. And then it'll also help to pour it in here to help crisp up the bottom, and it'll also make it nice to scoop up the edges for me. So we'll put it into the oven, in a 350 degrees for 20 minutes. We'll check it at 20 minutes and see if it needs any more extra time. It, depending on your oven, could take up to 30 minutes to bake your bread bowl. While our bread is baking in the oven, let's get started on our dip. So we're gonna start by taking a tablespoon of butter and we are going to put it into our pan and we're going to get melted on low. And with this dip, once we get that butter melted, we are then going to add 12 ounces of corn to that melted butter. So I'm going to add my 12 ounces of corn and I'm just gonna have this start heating its way through. I'm now going to start slicing up some of my vegetables that are going to go into this dip. I'm gonna start with a red pepper. So I'm gonna slice it up, and my goal here is to have about a quarter of a cup of red pepper when I'm all done slicing it. So with that being said, I'm gonna take, and I'm going to slice apart my pepper into my wedges. When I dice this up, I want it to be in tiny little pieces because remember, it's going into a dip. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it up into these little matchstick-like pieces, and then I'm going to finally dice those small matchsticks. So when I do it, I end up with a tiny little rectangle or a tiny little square going into my dip. So I'm gonna take some time, and I'm gonna slice these up, making sure that I'm careful around my fingers. I'm gonna take a little time out, stir up my corn again, making sure that I'm always keeping an eye on it. I don't wanna burn anything. And now I'm going to take and I'm gonna add my red pepper in so that starts cooking down in with my corn. The corn takes the longest to cook so I always put that in first. I'm gonna add my red pepper. I'm gonna stir that right away so that the flavors start to work together. And my next vegetable that's gonna go in is a jalapeno. Now, this scares some people. Some people don't think it's a big deal. If you're a person that doesn't cook with jalapenos much, all you need to keep in mind is avoid the seeds. If you avoid those seeds, you're good to go. You don't need to worry. 
I actually put jalapenos in quite a bit of the cooking that we do but I just always make sure because some people in my family are really anti-spice I just make sure to keep all of those seeds out of there so I've got some nice matchsticks here that are seed free and I'm gonna do just like I did with the red pepper and I'm going to slice those down into little pieces okay so I have my jalapeno all chopped up now I'm gonna add this in to my corn and red peppers that are already cooking and now I'm gonna cook this together for two or three minutes until everything looks like it's starting to soften nicely and cook down our vegetables have been sauteing for a little while and they're starting to soften so now it doesn't look like a dip yet so we need something to dip it up first down we built that bread bowl second down we got the vegetables cooked and now third down we're gonna turn it into a dip so I'm gonna start by taking three quarters of a cup of cheddar cheese and three quarters of a cup of shredded Colby and Monterey Jack mixed together and I'm gonna start by stirring that so the cheese starts melting around all of those vegetables and then to add an additional creaminess to it we're going to add a quarter of a cup of mayonnaise and we're going to stir all of this together and as soon as we start to do this it's really going to start to melt down once that mayonnaise hits because that extra oops fumble with that extra liquid in there it's going to help melt everything down so i like to stir it then let it sit stir it again then let it sit. We want all of these cheeses to melt together nicely. All right, we have our football bread bowl out of the oven and we have our dip and I tasted it a little bit. Now, one thing I like to do is serve this with nacho chips. So what I do is if I'm trying to decide if I, how much salt or pepper to add, I actually grab one of the nacho chips I'm gonna serve with and I take a little sample And it lets me know that I need some pepper and I definitely need some more salt in here. Okay. And now I'm going to transfer this over to my bread bowl. I'm going to take and pour it in to my cavity in my football. And now when people eat it, like I said, they have a choice. They can grab part of the bread bowl or they can have some nacho chips. So what I actually do is this pan that I put it in the oven, I leave it right on there. I lay my lace on the top of my football, just like that. And I grab some nacho chips. And I'm just gonna lay these in the front. And the nice thing about doing it this way is the pan keeps the bread warm and it keeps the dip warm and it will start to slowly heat up those nacho chips and it kind of gives it that restaurant feel if you ever go to a good mexican place where you get chips and they're just a hint warm because you know that they made them fresh we've got third down dip these enzo eclairs look pretty gosh darn fancy but are the perfect easy end to getting your football treats ready before the next big game. So let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one cup of water and I'm going to add it to my pan. And then I'm also going to add an entire stick of butter. Really, this is one of those four ingredient recipes that has kind of all of those basics. So I'm gonna start by getting my butter and my water boiling. So I've got my butter melted into my water and now the next part to making our end zone eclairs is to have our water boiling or our butter water mixture boiling and I'm going to add one cup of flour and I'm going to start stirring and stirring and stirring right away because I don't want it to seize up on itself. So I've got my flour in there and now I'm just going to keep stirring and stirring and stirring and stirring. Now when I'm doing this It'll look like you want to mix it until it's all combined, but actually you want to mix it even further. You want to keep mixing this until it gets to the point where you've got it wrapped up on itself into a ball. All right, so now we have it nice and combined together here, and this looks pretty perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some room because I'm going to take it out of this pan and I'm going to put it into a new cooler pan. 
The reason it has to cool down is we're going to add eggs as our final ingredient. If it's still warm, ooh, you're gonna end up with scrambled eggs in there. So we're gonna let this sit about five minutes and then we'll be back to add our eggs. Right, mi cariño. So like I said, everything I learned about cooking, I learned from grandma's empanadas. Shall we go again? Yep. Mix the beef with the onions, the onions with the peppers, the peppers with the paprika, the paprika with the garlic, the garlic with the oregano, the oregano with the cumin. Got it? Got it. Throw in the olive, stir, season, stir again, pour out the flour, roll out the dough, make a circle, drop in a fistful of filling, fold over, press down, and ta-da! Hmm. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. So while my dough was forming, I took out a cookie sheet and I greased it with vegetable shortening. So this is nice and cool and now we're ready to work with it without running the risk of making scrambled eggs in our eclairs. So I've got four eggs and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one egg at a time to my dough. And as soon as I get it in there, I'm going to break apart the yolk and I'm going to work on stirring it in and I'm not going to add the next egg until the first egg is fully combined. And we have our first egg incorporated. So I'm gonna do that now again with my remaining three eggs. All right, so we're spinning our dough around one final time to make sure we have all of our eggs incorporated. So now we have this nice sticky dough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a spoon and I'm gonna make a scoop. And now I'm gonna move that over to my pre-greased cookie sheet. I'm gonna push that on just like this. And I'm just gonna work at filling my cookie sheet. And you can put quite a few on here because this dough doesn't expand very much. And because this is a food you could serve at a party, it's up to you how big you wanna make them. If you want them to be mini eclairs, you can do small scoops like I'm doing. If you wanted to, you could make them larger. That's totally your choice. Or if you're a person who feels guilty about how much they eat, make big ones so you can have just one. Or if you feel better <laughs> eating a lot of something small, make them smaller. And I think I'm gonna call that pan good. I'll just go around, like I said, clean up my edges. All right, so you can see we got three, six, nine, ten on here, and we've got just about that much dough left. So you end up with about 20 end zone eclairs doing this recipe. We're gonna put it in a 400 degree oven for 30 minutes while I get a second pan ready, and we'll check out what they look like in just a bit. So we have our filling for the inside, and now we need our icing for the top of our end zone eclairs. So in order to do that, I'm gonna start by taking two ounces of white chocolate, and I'm gonna pop the pieces apart to make them a little smaller. And I'm gonna put them into my pan. And then I'm gonna start melting them right away. And then to that melted white chocolate, I'm gonna add my sugar and my whipped cream. Now, I'm picking white chocolate for a specific reason. The reason I have white chocolate is it's gonna give me the chocolate flavor, it's gonna give me some sweetness, but I'm also going to be able to make sure that I can dye it to the right color to match my team. And this time I'm gonna go with purple because my team of choice is purple and gold, and I already have gold made in my filling for the inside of my eclairs. So you can see it melts pretty quick because you don't have that much. So we'll pop that up. Now we're gonna add white granulated sugar, and we're going to add two cups to that melted chocolate. So I'm gonna bring that over. And then I'm also going to add one cup of whipping cream. And now I'm just gonna to work to stir and combine this. And I wanna work quickly to stir to combine this because I don't want my sugar to turn into a caramel. And now that I have it mostly combined, I'm gonna take the time to add my food coloring. So I'm gonna start by making a pretty straightforward purple by mixing some red and some blue together. So to keep it fair, I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And with my blue, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
And now let's take a peek at what this looks like. Now, when I mix my colors together with my food coloring, I like to, because this is more of a specific thing, I like to make sure that I put in equal amounts of each color because then I can go back. And you can see here that the blue's coming through a lot stronger. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in and add some more red to it. I also have a neon purple food coloring. If I feel that it looks kind of dull, I can go back and add that too. But I'm gonna start by adding some red. One, two, three, four, five. Through just a couple minutes of stirring, I've got a nice icing to put on the top to glaze my end zone eclairs with. So we'll get all of our pieces out and we'll start building. So we have our pastry done, we have our cream filling, and we have our icing for the top. It's time to put all of these together to make our eclairs. So I'm gonna start by taking one of my pastries and I'm gonna use a serrated knife. So that's the knife that has the little doot, 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 doot things on the edges. And I'm gonna gently slice it open. And when I do that, you'll see there's these little pockets along the way. I'm gonna slowly turn it and cut it totally apart so we have two separate pieces. So on the bottom half, I'm going to take my little custard filling and I'm gonna to start to make a thin layer in the middle of my eclair. And then I'm gonna set that part down and I'm gonna take the top half of my eclair now and I'm gonna dip it into my purple icing. And when I do that, I'm just gonna roll it around, let the excess drip off and I'm gonna to top my eclair. And I have my first end zone eclair now. I've got my gold filling so when people bite into it and then I've got my purple coating on the top. So I'm gonna work my way through and make the rest. It smells amazing in here. If you're having a party by yourself or if you're having a football party with everybody you know, you're sure to impress anybody eating these treats this time. I've got my team colors represented. I have some sweet and not so sweet and it all screams this could be at tailgating. So remember, the apron might be optional, but the flavor isn't. Are you ready for some baking? Football treats, that is. Get your... Hey, we have clips for the end. <laughs>